Hello there. Are you sure you're in the right place? See the name on the door? This podcast is spine chillers and serial killers. Surely you don't want to come in here. You do. Well, I must warn you that things are pretty adult in here. Absolutely no children are allowed. Obscene language, shocking and horrendous stories to chill you to your core, and terrifying tales that'll keep you up at night. The ladies inside aren't quite right. Lovely and hilarious, but very... strange. Still want in, do you? Well, you'll get what you're here for. Listener discretion is advised. Spine Chillers and Serial Killers. I'm Becky. I'm Tash. And I'm Emma. Hello. Hello. Hello there. We've got covid Becky once more. What Yay. a trooper. Honestly. COVID can't keep her down. Nothing keeps her down. There's a song there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I don't think I can speak, but I don't, don't know if I can manage singing today. <laughs> Okay. So I'll let I'll let you two take that one. I'll for me. carry us. I'll carry us. Thank you always do, babe, when it comes to singing. <laughs> <laughs> right. So because we have a very tired Tash, because her weeks are just mental, and a Becky that's full of COVID, and me just being me, so I'm just always tired anyway. We're just going to jump straight in, straight in, aren't we? We, we are Australian, we are. straight in, straight in. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> Right, Tash. Yeah? Do we need the jingle? Let's play that sweet, sweet jingle. Sit down, you boys and girls, and everyone in between. Story time. Tash has stories for you, both funny and obscene. Ooh. Did she swipe right, swipe left, or find out he had a rash? Ew. We're about to find out, because it's Tinder with Tash. So, as was forementioned, I am having time off from dating, but this does not mean that Tinder with Tash has to end. It just means that I have to troll the internet and find dating stories from other people. So, this is what I did today. Fabulous. I will be completely honest, I have copy and pasted this story completely. I've not put it into my own words because I figured they wrote it, so it's a bit unfair to rewrite it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Not sure if we're infringing on something there, but let's go. It literally, it was literally on like BuzzFeed or one of those. So I'm pretty sure it's fine. Well, they're more than welcome to, to the proceeds of this episode if they want, which is zero, (laughs) exactly zero Zero. anything. Yeah. Yeah. So I ran into a guy from high school after graduation and he invited me to meet up with him and some of our friends who I'd lost contact with. Well, when I got there at the restaurant, there was nobody there, only that one guy. Yep, I was ambushed into a date that I didn't want. Oh, cringe, cringe, So weird. Who's doing that? Who thinks that's a good idea? I mean, that's got to be illegal, hasn't it? I mean, maybe (laughs) not, but it's not cool, is it? It's not cool, no. Absolutely not cool. To make it worse, he had told the waiter we were on a date and to take their time. Two hours later. I've got to say, don't tell the waiter to take their time if they want the date to go well with me. I need the food quick. Yeah, Yeah, give me the food. So two hours later, I was finally able to leave. He walked me to my car, even though I asked him not to. And when I go to get in, he blocked me, leaned in for a kiss, which as I was not down for it at all. Oh, she have to do the awkward lean back. So weird, yeah, isn't the, it? The, oh. I have had that, though. It is really awkward. It was a dark parking lot and there was nobody around. Super sketchy. Very sketchy. Yeah. Something at dinner did not agree with him. He turned my head to the side and went for a friendly hug instead of an attempted kiss. 
and his bowels unloaded. <gasps> it was what? the gnarliest, loudest fart I have ever heard. <laughs> oh my God. If she wasn't down before, she's so definitely weird, isn't, isn't, isn't now. it? It Aww. happened the second the hug commenced and he didn't let go until the fart was done. <laughs> then he tried to kiss me again. I deflected oh, no. into another awkward hug and he farted again. <laughs> all in all, it was at least 45 seconds of a combined arse blast. <laughs> in the end, he made eye contact and said, let's do this again. It's a hard no from me. Yeah. Who's doing that? I wonder if it's the only way that he can pass wind through a hug <laughs> if someone squeezes it out hug. of him. Yeah. Maybe. I have to get two hugs in. If not, I'll be super gassy tomorrow at the office. Right. Benefit of the doubt here. I'm trying to put myself in this situation on the guy's part. So I'm a creepy guy and I really like this girl and I think I've been clever and had a good day and blah, blah, blah. Bleed in to kiss her. Gone wrong. Awkwardly. So I give her a hug. I then do a massive fart. I can understand the length of the hug because my brain would be going, what the fuck do I do now? But afterwards you go, oh, I'm really sorry. This is really embarrassing. See ya. And you I, leave? I would have just run away. <laughs> yeah, just, I would just have even run. said anything. I'd just be like, run. You'd yeah. look up from the hug and I would be going smaller and smaller into the horizon. Even if I'd left my car in the car park, I would sort of run away until she gone. <laughs> I, would have, I would have just bargained with the devil for hell to open up and grab me and take me now because I've just farted in the middle of a hug. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't go in for a second hug. No, I just think he's one of those guys that just farts and just doesn't care, which, like, fine. And he's definitely one of those ones that, like, cups his farts and, like, throws it in your face, isn't he? Oh, <laughs> yes, he is. A cupcake. Because he went in for that second kiss and hug, he definitely is that guy. Who would fart? On a first date, and then go in for a kiss. Think, oh, that that bit that sweetened her up. I'm just gonna go and breathe, breathing in air particles that were just up my ass a few minutes ago. That'll get her going. Let's go it's in for so a kiss. Disgusting, isn't it? It's instant ick. Like inst. I mean, she already had the ick, and now she's like triple icked. Triple. Well, I just think she had the ick from who he was in general. Like, yeah, the, the geezer pretended to do a social thing with lots of people and actually ended up just taking her on a date on her own. Like, what the fuck is that? It just got worse and worse, didn't it? Yeah. I would have been looking for the hidden camera because that is just a yeah. lot, isn't it? Mm. People are weird. So weird. I've got another one, if you like. Go on, yes. then. It wasn't a date date to me, but it was to him. He was a friend of my cousin's, so we were all sort of friends anyway. He talked non-stop about his ex fiance She yeah. was his fourth fiance. Fourth? Yes, yeah, so he'd already had four fiancés. Right, I've got two red flags straight away, okay. Four fiancés, but never the groom. <laughs> yeah, and got really angry when I mentioned one of my exes briefly, even though it was relevant to our conversation. That was when I decided it was 100% not going to go anywhere. Yeah. After a few more days of him blowing up my phone with texts and me not being proactive in replies, that's like the slow ghost. I've done that one many a time. Yeah, uh, you just yeah. like answer vaguely. Like, vaguely, yeah, really no. slowly. You're blatantly online. That Homer Simpson gif, just slightly going going back into the bushes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I decided ghosting was not the way to go and told him outright I was not interested in seeing him. I sent him a detailed message as I did not want to phone him and make him think calling was an option. He knew I finished work at 10pm and as it turned from 9.59 to 10pm, the first message came through on WhatsApp. I ignored it, so he sent it as a text, then a Facebook message. At 10.15, he called my phone through WhatsApp and called on Facebook. More texts came in at 10.20. Then at 10.30, there were more calls. I put my phone on aeroplane mode so I could eat, shower and watch my favourite show in peace. I even knocked Wi-Fi and Bluetooth off. I switched it all back on at midnight, set my alarm for the next day. 
I had 17 missed call alerts, 35 text messages, 40 WhatsApp messages, 20 odd Facebook messages, and 10 plus WhatsApp calls, all between 10.30 and midnight. At 12.05, I got another text, so I blocked him. The next day, he drove up and down the road outside my workplace. This is scary. This is scary. Fucking weird, isn't it, mate? No, honestly, everyone, you send a text, they don't text back. Send another one. If you don't, if they don't message back, that's it. Don't need to go any further. That is absolutely no, you should get the hint. 35 fucking sex messages is not normal. That's not okay. Even is it? I don't send 35 messages to try and get Tasha's and Beck's attention about the <laughs> podcast. It's true. No. You know. She doesn't. She stops at 29. <laughs> mm. yeah. That's weird. I just don't understand. That I get embarrassed. Oh, you can double text. That's it. Yeah, either that or when it's, you know, when you're texting in like a conversation, you send a little bit of a message and then you send it and then a little bit more and then you send it. That's yeah, more acceptable. That's fine. That's fine if you're in an in, in a conversation. But also, let's put this into perspective. She's told him she doesn't want to see him. So it's yeah. not the same as messaging your friend or sending your friend 35 memes and them not replying. This actually, what he's doing is harassment. Like, that isn't okay. Like, that's not cool. He's gone, like, full-on psycho because she said she's not interested. So she's blocked him, right? Yeah. The next day, he drove up and down the roadside outside of her workplace. Fucking hell. My work had a massive window and I could see. He used (sighs) his own car, his mum's car, his dad's car, and his sister's. Wow. This went on for weeks. All of it Jesus took place Christ. from July to September. And this is someone she knew beforehand as well. That was in like part her of her cousin's friend friends. Group. So like, yeah, like in their work, in their social circle. I'd be messaging the cousin and be like, what, get the, what, what are you doing? So all of this took place between July and September. But then he was married to somebody else by the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> and that, and that's the end of that. I don't give that marriage that long. poor lady who married him. I don't be understanding these people that get married that quickly. It's mad, isn't it? So that was like in the summer and they were already yeah. married. One, I don't know, you just, you haven't in that time, you haven't done all the things oh that God, with yeah. someone that might annoy you. You've not even got to the point where you can have a shit comfortably whilst they're in the house, surely. No, definitely not passing wind yet in front of each other. Not like the <laughs> bloke before. That's probably what he was trying to get that step out of the way. <laughs> Just dive into, he was ready to pop the question on the next date. Oh, God. That's scary. Oh, and God. People be people crazy. Are insane. Mm-hmm. It's kind of really made me want to fart, though. <laughs> Do it. Go on. <laughs> That's what the people want. No, I'm really joking. Maybe I'm not. If no. you pull your butt cheeks yeah, apart, it doesn't make a sound. <laughs> Do you know what? That doesn't work because I tried. <laughs> it does work. It just goes... Yeah, it does. <laughs> I do it all the time. Definitely I'm, like, I'm significantly oh. bigger than both of yours, so that's probably why it doesn't work. <laughs> Maybe you're just not pulling hard enough, babe. You've oh, really got to stretch that anus <sighs> out. <laughs> Right, you've oh. really got to open that eye. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you've got to do? do I gross myself out. Oh, don't. It's making me feel really uncomfortable talking about this. Can you really feel your bum at the minute? You stretch your <laughs> anus so the air escapes without... Is that going... what you're stretching? It's not the fact that your bum cheeks touch. I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> Can we stop? No, I don't know. Please cut this out. I don't want this to be in. <laughs> I love how much you trust me to remove this. I know you're not going to remove this. (laughs) But I'm okay feeling stupid that I don't know how to silence my farts. (laughs) No, I think it's a combination of both, Tash. Okay. (laughs) Fine. I mean, sometimes it doesn't work. I can't guarantee that it works. It doesn't. Every time, it definitely Tash. doesn't. I mean, I've been doing this for years. It doesn't. If you're in, a, yeah. If you're in a really important meeting, I'd just try and hold on to that <laughs> until the end. Wait until you get to your car. Oh God. <laughs> then let loose. Right. Anyway, that's it for Tinder with Tash. 
Well, thank and you. And farts with Tash yeah. and any other bodily functions that you want to discuss with me. I mean, we always get to thank bums, you, don't man. we? It's always bums. We're obsessed. Obsessed. Any weird noises that you can hear while I'm talking, I'm really sorry that they're annoying, but it is my dog chewing anything he can get his teeth on and there's nothing I can do to stop him. It's fine. Let him do his thing. He's all right. Aren't you, shithead? Yeah. Right. Becky has a little mini story, I think, for us this week because she's poorly. Yeah. So every year, more than 600,000 people go missing in the United States. Oh, I hate this already. <laughs> it, for, no, seriously, miss, going missing, free, where do they go? How do people just vanish? It bothers me a lot. Yeah. I mean, I think I'm going to do like a, an episode on missing people. Maybe once when um, when your story is a bit shorter. Okay. You can really dive deep into a lot of the missing cases and uh, they all kind of seem linked sometimes in a way and it's very, very weird. Especially the ones that don't pop up again. Oh, I don't like it. This is just a short one, so we get, we get an end into it, so don't worry. Anywhere between 89 and 92% of those missing people are, re- are recovered every year. Hey, those are good odds. Yeah. Yeah, that's quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah, I would have expected it to be way, way lower. That makes me feel better. They're recovered, but they're either alive or deceased. So that's all mixed together. Oh. That's not just alive people. I see how you kind of took that. This is a roller coaster. <laughs> you sound out of breath already, babe. <laughs> <laughs> But how many of those disappear in the wild is unclear. The National Park Service don't keep track of how many people go missing every year. There's not like a big general database. I feel like there should be. Yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously the per park they're, they're kept track of, but there's not like a database where you can say this many percent of people that go missing go missing in forests and like in the wild in, in America. Strangely, the most reliable info on missing people in the wild comes from Bigfoot hunters. In 2011, David Pulleeds, founder of the North America Bigfoot Search, launched a database of wildland disappearances that occurred under mysterious circumstances. From his research, there are at least 1,600 people, give or take, currently missing in the wild somewhere in the United States. How terrifying. Yeah, so, awful. Right, say that number again. I, sorry, I got stuck on Bigfoot Hunters because I fucking love Bigfoot Hunters. They're ace. Yeah. Well, that I'm, I'm, I don't talk about them too much because it's kind of more stepping onto your territory. No, love them. I think they're ace. Yeah. I, I will at one point do a Bigfoot thing just to talk about the Bigfoot Hunters because they're amazing. <laughs> they're all called so they Ian are... or <laughs> Ian. Terry. <laughs> and Ted. And they've got like <laughs> anoraks and they go around the woods making Bigfoot noises, Bigfoot noises going. Rawr, rawr, rawr. <laughs> They're amazing. And I love them. So say that number again. So 1,600 people, give or take, are currently missing That's a lot. in the United States. So it's just in the US. But just in the woods. Just in the the US wild areas. Yeah, yeah. like in the wilderness of, the, of America. So like they've gone hiking and they're missing. Yeah, so that's from his research. That's people that are, like, confirmed. So is he thinking that Bigfoot has abducted them, this researcher? Well... Is that why he knows? Uh, I don't know. And I didn't really go into it in my notes, so I can't tell you. Maybe I can go back and find more. But um, I think it's because they're, like, out looking for Bigfoot all the time. And then, like, they'll see the troop- state troopers go by and be like, hey, this person's missing. And they'll kind of just like update on the story. And if that person's not found, it won't be in the news. And uh, I think that's where they get their information from. Uh, So according to David's data, often people disappear in the late afternoon, during or just before severe weather. Bodies are often found in previously searched areas and often without clothing or footwear. This is because when hypothermia sets in, People tend to, they Get feel hot. really, really hot, so yeah. they uh, take their all their clothing off. But the biggest obstacle getting any information about how many people are missing in the wild is actually the National Park Service red tape. It's because they're, obviously they're not going to advertise how many people that go missing in all these national parks. If not, no one's going to, you know, lots of people are going to be like, actually, no, I'm not going to go and visit there. Pass. Uh, Pass. Yeah. 
So if they show the true data on how many people disappear, it would probably shock the public very badly and the numbers would just fall down. I don't think there's a big conspiracy to keep the numbers hidden, but it's just kind of like business, you know? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. This just brings me to my little story today. So on the 3rd of June, 2022, in Troy, in northwestern Montana, three-year-old Riker Webb was playing in his backyard with his dad and family dog. Riker was a happy little chap with reddish blonde hair. Well, no, reddish, they say reddish blonde hair. He has definitely got red hair uh, with big blue eyes. He loved being in the garden and he loved looking for bugs in the garden and then in, in the forest when he was out with his dad. And so they were in the back of the yard and his dad just popped inside the house just for a moment. And when he came back out, he immediately realised that the dog and Riker were both nowhere to be seen. Thinking that the dog had somehow run out, got out of the garden and Riker must have followed him, the dad went running around looking for him. God, nightmare. Oh, a nightmare. Belly just hits the floor. Yeah. So he was running around, panicked, trying to find his little boy. He couldn't find him anywhere. He eventually called the police, but two only two hours later, he called the police. Even the police would scathe him for this because such a small child going missing. That's a long time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think I would have called before two hours, but there's the whole first bit where you're like, actually, you know, the people call the police and the kid is actually in the house eating snacks yeah. on the table, you know. But I'm sure they'd rather have the call for nothing than... Wait two hours. Yeah, two hours of search time being lost. Police quickly put together a search team of over 50 officers and started straight away wow. wanting to find the little boy before dark. So this was June time, so it was really, really it had been really, really hot. But, you know, as it was happening in the afternoon, you know, it started to cool down a bit. With them, they also took sniffer dogs, drones and helicopters to just throw as much resources as possible at this to try and find him before sunset. They also put out a red alert to the surrounding area saying this. A toddler aged three with blue eyes and red hair has been reported missing from Troy today. He is wearing button-down blue pyjamas. Please search for your properties and coordinate in rescuing him. The officers were thinking maybe he could could have got stuck in someone's shed. He could be resting in someone's, like, outhouse or in their garden, playing with someone's dog. You know, you know how kids just, they kind of get into everything. It seems even Mother Nature wasn't on their side because about three hours into the search, a massive thunderstorm hits. Oh, poor little love out there on his own. This kind of grounds the drones and helicopters, and the rain would wash away a lot of the scent of the small boy from oh, away from shit. the sniffer dogs. Oh, God. So the next day, crack of dawn, they're all up and ready, searching again. The next day, the sun was out, and it was boiling again. So this area is pretty... It's like the wilderness, really. Mountain lions and bears were free, frequently sighted in the area. Fuck that! <laughs> Why do people live places like that? It's just like, oh yeah, that's a lion. That's a mountain lion. Yeah. In my yeah. garden. That shouldn't be anywhere near where people are. As they were looking, detectives did find clues that Riker had been where they were looking. They'd kind of found traces of him. So as I said earlier, the little boy loved looking for bugs. And what they were seeing were these little piles of stones where he'd kind of moved the stones on the floor around to try and find bugs and was kind of dropping them as he was walking. You know how kids do when they're just like trundling around everywhere? Yeah, 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 yeah. So he keeps leaving these little piles of stones. Again, the whole day goes by and they can't find him. So they go into the next day. So this is on the 5th of June now. And there's a couple in the area that are visiting their cabin for the weekend. And they heard like a child's little whimper, like a little cry. So they go around to investigate and hear the cry again near their shed. So they go and look in there and they find little Riker. Oh, thank God. Inside of their lawnmower bag, like curled up asleep. Oh. Well, not asleep, but like napping. Yeah. He'd actually been found two and a half miles away from his home which is really impressive considering that it's like all like woods he went through the woods and found this other person's cabin so it's all like manky wooded terrain 
He was hungry, thirsty, and cold. When police arrived, they said that the little lad was absolutely just shocked and scared, you know, wide-eyed. They took a photo of him, and a photo of Riker was published looking very... His eyes were, like, round. You know when, you know when someone's really, really scared? Yeah. The poor little lad actually looks like he has PTSD. He looks traumatised from being outside in the dark for two nights and two days. So he was wide-eyed, dirty, skinny, dehydrated. But they, you know, they printed that in the newspaper saying that the toddler had been found. So he was to return to his parents and everything was fine. They looked into the parents to make sure that he wasn't neglected or anything like that, because you know, they were worried about the, the two-hour thing. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, they kind of realised you know, it was just one of those. Dad nipped him for five minutes and that's when baby decided to run away. <laughs> But then TikTok happened. So because of his appearance, when they found him, and he looked quite different to his little baby pictures where he's all happy and smiley, this started a rather large bout of online stories and TikTok videos of people claiming that the baby that they'd found was not Riker at all, and it was in fact a skinwalker. <sighs> People pushing this theory said that Riker wasn't found in the same clothes as the parents said that he was wearing, says that his face looks different. There was a video of this other little lad. This lad kind of wanders out of this house. You see someone else filmed it on TikTok and he came and looked at this man's like truck that he was sat in. And the the video was titled, Oh, this is this is Riker as he was transforming into his final form as a skinwalker and all this rubbish online, it can all be explained away. The fact that the dad didn't tell the police exactly 100% why he was why He was still wearing blue pyjamas. It's just he forgot that they had a pattern on them. That was all it was. He was wearing the same clothes. And also, when you're panicking, you can't really remember stuff. Yeah. Like, I don't know if I did mention it on the podcast or not, I can't remember, when um, we kind of lost my little girl for, a, you know, for about 10 minutes in the summer, my husband completely said that she was wearing a completely different coloured dress that she was actually wearing. So that that's just panic. Yeah. I mean, I'll send you the pictures of the before and after that they keep putting on TikTok, but they've kind of chosen a, a, a photo of before where he looks a lot younger. So that would explain why he didn't look the same. And also the fact that his eyes are really round and kind of sunken in, but also bulging out, is because he's dehydrated. When I actually tried to find out a bit more about this theory, there was literally no articles written about it. It was just idiots on TikTok uh, or Reddit because people are bored and full of shit. So it's just putting the family through more upset. Yeah. But no, Riker is doing well now. Um, I think he's four now yeah it happened last year so yeah he'll be four now i'm just getting on well so happy ending to this one that's really really good and i knew this story when you said he had reddish hair i was like oh i know this story but you see you know what i mean by the pictures yeah yeah yeah, he yeah. just look traumatized he's, doesn't he's he he's got that thousand what do they call it the thousand yard stare that like yeah people that have been massively traumatized have yeah yeah his eyes are bulging out of his head but yeah i think my, mine would be if, if i'd been stuck in the woods for two days oh yeah a hundred percent a hundred percent in a three-year-old's body yeah yeah poor little lad i'd seen everything where he wasn't found in the same clothes and stuff but you've just explained that away so now i'm like oh it was literally just a little lad that got lost and I mean, some of the videos are qu about it are quite good. They they are quite creepy, but they're very easily explained away. Yeah. I mean, uh, some some of the Skinwalker stuff has a lot more depth to it and a lot more like, oh, maybe. But this one is just people being idiots online. Yeah, <laughs> really yeah. this is just a little lad that went missing and luckily yeah. got found, thank God. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because uh, something could have happened to him the first night, you know, with that big storm hitting, yeah. he could have fallen into a stream anything could have happened anything yeah talking of lost little boys have you got an update about emil no no they still haven't found him oh, oh god there's a lot of weird stuff but i don't know if what's true and what's not because well, that's the world we live in isn't it yeah and not yeah and then also what pisses me off with um the way that it is in france with stuff like this 
is their right, but they don't show people's faces. Like, um, when there's like murder suspects, stuff like that, they'll blur the faces out. Whereas in England, USA and everything, they'll just show you everything. <laughs> so you don't get to see anyone. They always blur people's faces out and they show you this big blurred picture. And I'm like, what, what's the point? What's the fucking point of that? So are there suspects then? I, I, th- I think that they're, they're looking into the family, but just, as they would with a normal investigation, they always have to rule that out, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. But no, I think they they definitely found evidence of him walking down the road. They had a like a scent of him that just suddenly stops at like this little water fountain or something. And then it just goes Just goes cold. As as if he got into a car, yeah. As if he got into a vehicle. Oh dear. So no, still not got it. But there's um like an hour away from this one there was a little boy that went missing i think in the 80s or 90s and it was exactly the same he just went missing and never was never found i hate it i hate it i hate that there's no closure yeah, for the no. family oh, awful horrible i'll let you know though if there's any if there's any updates oh yes yes please do um about the face blurring i kind of agree with it because look what it did to um Oh, what's his name, Becky? Oh, yeah. Jeffries. Mr. Jeffries. Yeah. Yeah, but what I'm moaning about really is, you know, like, um, like the, the crime documentaries that we watch. Yeah. Online, where like, we've already found who it is. There was this one where it was the kid that was, uh, had been killed and they, they blurred out the parents. It was the parents that did it, but they blurred out their faces. And I don't know why. I was like, why? <laughs> I don't know. Well, sometimes they blur everything out, but um, yeah, yeah. I suppose, yeah. If it's just a suspect, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, they should um, have blurred out Mister Jeffries and saved him a lot of hassle. Yeah. Okay then. I'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, actually, thank you for that because that's given me some. Because that's been a case that I've known about and been like, oh, "What the fuck happened? Why isn't he wearing the same clothes?" Why are his eyes like that? Why does he look like that? But yeah, that's sorted it now. Yeah. I mean, everyone has their own opinion. But like I say, when when you look at the fact that the only evidence for those sides is on TikTok and one article, one, a comment on Reddit, it kind of sh- shows itself that it's just people making up stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I'm naive as fuck. You know, if I watch something saying it's a skinwalker, I'm like, yes, it's a skinwalker. This is weird. It's the end of the world. Skinwalkers are real. So there you go. Are you ready for some spooky, spooky ghosts? Let's do this. Right, here we go. If my audio is still shit, I've got stuff on my walls. I've put a pillow in front of my microphone. I don't know why. I just thought, ooh, let's try this. If I'm still down a toilet, I'm sorry. It'll get sorted eventually. So, just south of the center of Mexico City, in the channels of Hoshimilco... Well done. Is a shinampa. So a shinampa is a floating garden that is used for agriculture as the water surrounding it provides irrigation and so the ground is very fertile. Oh. So the particular island we're talking about today is called La Isla de las Muñecas. Nice. Well done. That was exactly how it's pronounced. I think possibly not, but I tried. That translates to the Island of the Dolls. Uh That sounds terrifying. I'm just imagining all the faces. Now, how did a little island gain such a creepy name? You may be wondering. I am wondering that. I thought you might be. Have no fear, I have all the answers, and it is the stuff of nightmares. Can't wait to go to sleep tonight. In 1921, Julian Santana Barrera was born in a borough of Mexico City. Julian grew up extremely religious, and eventually his preaching of the gospel got too much for people, and he started to get beaten up quite frequently. Oh, bless him. I know, as he toured around the Catholic communities. People did not appreciate his sermons as he was not an appointed priest. So apparently it was kind of frowned on for anybody to be like spreading the word of God if they weren't an actual priest. Oh. So these religious people, Catholic people, thought, do you know what? I'm going to beat the shit out of him. Because that's God's way, apparently. 
That's religion, though, isn't it? It's not always... Um... Love thy neighbour. Yeah. No, beat, beat thy man. <laughs> Thou shalt not beat the shit out of people. I'm sure is in the Bible. <laughs> yeah. So this ended up with Hu- Julian becoming more and more reclusive, and eventually, in the fifties, he left his family behind and went on to become the caretaker of a shinempa, where he lived as a hermit and grew vegetables that he would sell. So this is where our story takes a more gruesome turn. One day, Julian found a little girl caught in the reeds around the island. He tried to resuscitate her, but he was too late. She had drowned. Bobbing alongside her was a doll that he brought out of the water. He buried the child on the island. Okay, I know exactly what you're thinking. It's weird that he found a body and just buried it. And that's that. No police or anything. No one identifying the body or saying they're missing a child. It is definitely weird. But as always with the paranormal, there is the story and there is the legend. And often the two get muddled. So what I have said above is the legend. But I've also read that the little girl died on the island before Julian lived there. But he was aware of her death. And I think this is a more likely story. Because the body would have been dealt with accordingly and not just buried on a random island by, let's face it, a somewhat eccentric man. Yeah. Either way, a little girl drowned in the water and washed up in the reeds of Julian's Shinampa at some point, either before or after he lived there. And he did indeed find a doll in the water and brought it onto the island. He also placed a white cross where the girl was believed to have been found. But in doing this, Don Julian may have awoken something that needed to be left alone. Oh no. He brought the doll to the island and soon after began hearing whispers. I want my doll. I want my Bring doll. me my doll. Bring me my doll. Bring me my doll. Bring me my doll. Ugh. Out of fear and respect for the dead, Julian hung the doll to a tree to try and protect himself from the spirit. The next day, another doll had washed up on the shoreline. Finding this odd and too much of a coincidence, he hung that doll on a tree too. The dolls would wash up all the time on his island and one by one, he would hang them up to the trees. Now, that is a bit freaky because like, it is a bit of a random thing. It's not like a common thing that you see wash up. Yeah. No, it was like a big con- shipping container of dolls like crashed somewhere. Yeah, but then they'd all be identical and this isn't the case, is it? Uh, and also it's way back no, when, not. isn't it? It's not like, it's not recent, is it? Well, it, yeah, yeah. And also, why do ghosts always have to whisper? Can they not be like, hey up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you put these dolls on the tree? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're not right good up there, lass. Right. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's a lord's bear. I love, love that. And yet, he said he was still plagued by the little girl's angry spirit. He began searching in people's rubbish for broken dolls. He would exchange his produce for dolls instead of money. He was constantly watching the water to see if any dolls were floating. The state of the doll didn't matter. Dirty, broken, naked, dismembered, headless, they all went up in the trees of his island. In fact, the uglier, the better, as his intention at this point was to scare the spirit away. As you can imagine, this made for a terrifying sight frozen little glass eyes following your every move on the island. I wouldn't like to see that. No. Burnt plastic dolls hanging from the neck swinging in the wind. He had a favourite doll that he had made a shrine for. She's called Augustina and wears a straw hat and a turquoise dress. She was his favourite and he believed that she helped protect him and even heal him when he was ill. He would talk to Augustina, who was really his only companion on the island, and at night he said she would get up and walk around, making sure everything was safe. I'm not sure she did that, but if that made him sleep better at night, then that's fine. Now, Augustina um, is still on the island, and people can bring her like little gifts, and it is believed that she can bless people and, yeah, heal them and stuff. So, wow, there you go. Ooh, I wonder if the, you know, like wind chimes when the wind blows and they blow through all the dolls' 
arms and stuff. Oh, if, if it makes eyes. a noise. More like, oh. like that. That's a horrible noise. I'll, I'm just going to send you some <laughs> photos of the dolls. Look at that one. Oh, I don't want to look. Neither, oh, that's horrible. <laughs> Why is it all oh, that texture? It makes me feel sick. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, what's happened to it? <laughs> oh my god! What? I don't understand. That is not the image that I had in my head. I don't know if it's worse or better than what I was thinking. I think no, it's, it's worse. worse. That is horrific. It looks like it's strung up a load of baby corpses, doesn't it? It's horrible. Oh, that's horrific. Emma, where the fuck do you get these things? I mean, there's a little bat one, isn't there, there, upside down? Why would you hang that one upside down like a bat baby? (laughs) It's horrendous. I will post all these to our social media. This is fucking horrible. (laughs) Okay, he also believed that despite wanting to scare the spirit of the little girl... Other spirits had become attached to the dolls, making the whispers and eerie noises at night worse than ever. And realistically, just keeping our paranormal heads on here, with that many ugly, creepy dolls, there is a good chance that he ended up with a Annabelle or a Robert the Doll on his island without him knowing. I mean, they look haunted. All of them do. There's also a strange energy here. This area dates back to when the Aztecs used to farm it, so it has quite a strong spiritual connection and could also be a reason as to why this particular island is so active with paranormal activity. And again, we're talking about a little island so surrounded by water and as seen on previous episodes, water is a great conduit for ghostly energy. All this could possibly explain what's happening here. Until the day he died, Don Julian collected these dolls and put them everywhere on the island. In every wooden shed, he would nail them to the walls and every tree branch was covered. When he died in 2001, there was around 4,000 dolls on the island. Wow. He died spookily in the exact spot where the little girl is thought to have been found. He had had a heart attack and fallen into the water drowning. There is now a black cross next to the white one as a memorial for him, and his spirit is said to have joined the others that roam the island. His nephew took over the island after his uncle's death and opened it up to the public. People can go and visit the dolls and also leave a doll behind as an offering, but it is strictly forbidden to remove the dolls that are already there. And frankly, why would anybody want to? These things are hideous. They've been out in the elements for years and years on end. They're covered in mould, bugs, mushrooms, and they are, quite frankly, terrifying. I think you girls, after seeing the photos, can uh, agree. I don't understand why anyone's going there. To see all the creepy dolls. Why? We've just seen them. We don't need to go. (laughs) Just Google it. The tour guides that take people to the island say that they can hear little voices whispering, whistling and giggling at night. They also see tiny little shadows running in between the trees. Even though they have no issues going to the island during the day, they say that they would not go onto it at night. Tourists who have sailed past have heard the dolls calling to them, beckoning them to come and visit. Come here, come here, come here. Or... You're all right, love. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, that I'm just, I'm just keep looking at the dolls' pictures. I'm kind of like just don't know what to say. <laughs> During the day, people have seen the dolls' heads move to follow them as they explore the island. The arms and legs have also been seen squirming and wriggling as if the dolls are trying to free themselves from their nooses. All in all, I can totally see why La Isla de las Muñecas is considered one of the most haunted places in the world. And it is. I can see. I can see why, too. I yeah. get that. Yeah. Some of the things that you show us sometimes, I'm like, why is that haunted? But this one you can definitely see. So I was looking for photos and this apparently is just a photo of a woman that was visiting the island. It was her brother taking the camera and she was alone. So have a look at that. Whoa, that's a hard no from me. <laughs> Why are they going there? What can you see? Tell people what you can see. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. This is not a visual, is it? 
uh, well, there's very clearly a blurry figure, like as if somebody's walking. So the woman is stood there having her picture taken. She's obviously still. And there's a man, seemingly a man with like a poncho walking behind her, but like through through the branches. And if you like zoom onto the face, it's horrifying. Yeah. I, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> well, it's, it's like faceless kind of. In my head, no, I don't. I've got to turn it off because I feel sick. Um... <laughs> okay, I'll move on to something a bit happier. Will you? Thanks. Are we going to talk Emma. about tea and cake? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Doll Island should be where the Madonia family got rid of their haunted Elsa doll when it started acting strange. So when you think about haunted dolls, you don't really think about modern dolls being haunted. And yet, this Elsa doll obviously wanted to break the stereotype by freaking the Texas family out. She was, as you can imagine, a modern doll, the star from the film Frozen. She had a button on her necklace that when pressed, she would say phrases like, let it go. I think we've had this doll. Oh, well, there you go. There was no choosing what she said. It was just totally random. You pressed it and she said something. This Elsa doll spoke in English. And again, there was no setting anywhere to change the language. And yet, after a while, the doll started speaking Spanish and singing randomly, even when turned off. The family decided that it was obviously short-circuiting or something and threw it away. They put it outside in the rubbish bin with all the other rubbish and it got taken away by the rubbish bin truck. Two weeks later, the dad was looking for something and opened up a wooden trunk and who was staring back at him? Creepy fucking Elsa. They asked the kids if they'd gotten her out of the bins and they said, no, of course not, because that's gross. They're not going to go rummaging through bins. The couple were freaked out and threw her out again. This time, they put her in her own bag and then put her in the rubbish bag and they placed that bag at the bottom of the outside bin underneath all the other rubbish bags. And again, she was taken away. I wonder if it's like a... What a weird neighbours like looking at them and like, hey, I'm gonna fuck with these guys. Maybe, but I can't imagine that they would do it more than once. Yeah. <laughs> that second time they would have been doing it in their house. Like putting her oh. in a bin bag and then putting that bin bag in an open bin bag with all their rubbish and then taking it out so nobody would have seen that they were throwing away a doll. Yeah. Yeah, I that is weird. No. So then the family went away for a few days, only to return home to Elsa sat on their front lawn, staring at them. And they knew this was the same doll because their daughter had coloured on her and the markings of the, the felt tip were still there. So it was the same doll. Ugh. Understandably, they were all now extremely freaked out and needed to get rid of Elsa for good. So a friend of theirs in Minnesota said he would take her and attach her to the front of his Jeep. Now, I'm not sure I'd be attaching a haunting doll to my motor vehicle, but there you go. No. No, I I feel like that's the worst place maybe for a haunted doll, like in Mm. your car, on your car. Yeah, where where you can like crash and die. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not. He said that if anything weird happened, he would weld her into a lead pipe and throw her into the lake. (sighs) It's dramatic, isn't it? It would get the job done. Yeah. How else do you get rid of a doll that doesn't let you? I don't know, babe. I'd just give up and... (laughs) You would just live with the demon Elsa. Yeah. (laughs) So whether Elsa understood that she'd better behave or he has just been lucky so far, Elsa is still attached, a pride of place on his Jeep. You know what she says? Let it go, let it go. She does say that, but she now says it in Spanish. Now, that's all been pretty tame, so we're going to go on to a little bit of scary. Hold on, it's not finished. (laughs) Can't cope anymore. I've got a cupboard full of dolls. And now on to our last and maybe most terrifying story, as I have a true fear of these things. A ventriloquist doll named Mr. Fritz. Fine, we don't have any of those in my house. I don't like them dolls at the best of times. Okay, Mr. Fritz is a handmade ventriloquist dummy made between 1943 and 1945. His maker, Billy Booth, was a children's entertainer. Billy Booth. 
Billy Booth. I love that name. It's a great children's entertainer name, to be fair. Yeah, it is. And he was a ventriloquist before the war. He had ended up in Stalag 2B, a German prisoner of war camp in Poland. The days as a prisoner of war were excruciatingly difficult, made to work non-stop and given very little food, but the prisoners tried to keep up morale best they could with songs and stories, and eventually, Mr Fritz. He was made out of newspaper and potato starch and painted with a smuggled pot of pink paint. Billy would put on shows and even the German guards found him funny. Sadly, just two weeks before the camp was liberated, Billy and nine other prisoners were taken into a field, made to dig a hole, and then they were told that they weren't digging fast enough and all ten were shot. Fucking hell. After the liberation, one of Billy's friends took Mr. Fritz back to America for Billy's family, just so they could know that up until the end, he had tried to make people laugh and forget about their frightening surroundings. At some point, we're not sure when or why exactly, maybe because he is actually creepy as fuck, Mr. Fritz ended up at an antique mall and was bought by an English antique dealer. The dealer, who wishes to remain anonymous, first started to notice something strange when he put Mr. Fritz on display in his showroom. He would lock up for the night and come back in the morning to discover that Mr. Fritz's display case door was wide open, even after it had been firmly shut. Every night it would be shut, yet every morning it would be open again. Things then started to take a more uncanny turn. Mr. Fritz would sometimes have his eyes open, when they were normally closed. His mouth would also change position. The dealer tried to think of obvious explanations, such as humidity, a breeze, or even going as far to think that a mouse may have made a nest in his head. On closer inspection, he discovered it was neither of these things. Day after day, the door continued to open, so he finally taped it shut. The following day, he returned to find the tape peeled back and the door open once more. He finally removed Mr. Fritz from his showroom and placed him in the garden shed, where he stayed for another six months. His children then reported hearing laughter from the shed as they played in the garden, and nobody would dare go near it. That's when the dealer decided it was time for Mr. Fritz to find somewhere else to live. He had met Michael Diamond at a festival and knew that he would be interested in Mr. Fritz, as Michael is somewhat of a travelling showman. He has collected over the years many strange, intriguing artefacts, such as an elephant-headed boy from the Braiding Waxwork Museum, real execution swords and axes, Houdini's handcuffs and shrunken heads that he displays in a room he calls the Freak Room. Mr. Fritz would fit right in. At this point, not much is left of the doll, just a head and a stick. But Michael gladly accepted him into his collection. But as expected, weird things began happening with Michael too. The doll's case would open on its own accord, so often that he decided to set up a camera to figure out what was going on. In the video, you can clearly see the case open for no reason, and Mr. Fritz's eyes and mouth move. It is really, really creepy, and it looks like the head is saying, help me, which does not make it any better at all. Michael now keeps the case chained shut and hopefully that is where Mr. Fritz will remain. I hope and pray to. And I have sent you a photo of Mr. Fritz. I don't want to see your shit photo. <laughs> oh! Oh, Emma, no! Do you want to see the video of his eyes and mouth moving Emma, by it themselves? It makes me feel physically sick. <laughs> He's horrible, isn't he? Oh, who the fuck painted him like that? Yeah, I mean, it was Billy Booth. He, he painted him like he could. With He's what he no had. artist, is he? Well, darling, he was in a prisoner of war camp. Let's be <laughs> nice to Billy Booth, okay? Do you want to see the video? Quickly. <sighs> All right. Yeah, but Emma, it's just not nice. I live alone. Okay, I've sent you the link. You have to scroll down a bit and you'll find the video. Again, I'll post this video to our socials. It's basically just Mr. Fritz in a glass case and um, it's done over two nights. The first night you see the case open 
And then on the second night, the case opens and the doll's eyes and mouth move as if he was saying, help me. It's really horrible. God, my heart's beating so fast. God, I'm so scared right now. Have you watched it? Well, I'm watching yeah. it. It's quite long. It's... <gasps> oh. The mouth is stupid. The eyes are okay, but the, that's that's poo. What? <laughs> what do you mean? When it's when it, his mouth moves. Yeah, I'm not believing it. What do you think it is? Photoshop. What do you think? It's video edited. Yeah. Oh, okay. The way that opens, though. Oh, the 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 door. Fair enough, yeah. but the. Oh, I hope you're getting this audio. My dog's having a dream and she's like full on talking in her sleep. If you skip it to about three and a half minutes, Taz. I think I have to I have to agree with Becky about the mouth. Yeah, I know it looks glitchy on the video. I know it looks glitchy, but I just assumed that was because it was moving and it was on night vision. But you know, I can't keep watching that though. It's making me feel sick. <laughs> even without the moving mouth. It's I mean, creepy. even without that, it's it's horrible. That vi- that I feel like it's eating me with its eyes, like staring into my soul and being like, mm, "Yummy, yummy soul." Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Anyway, shall we go? Shall we let the people yeah. be gone? Thanks so much for listening to us. <clears throat> Look oh, at memes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Listen to Becky burp, talk about <laughs> farting, and just enjoying all things spine chillers and serial killers. That was a very nice little monologue there, Cash. <laughs> it was. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that my burp destroyed it. It's fine. It's yeah. fine. Sorry. I had, I had to take um, a bit of like Gaviscon before we started because I had a bit of a uh, indigestion. indigestion. So that, that's what's. That's what's bubbling up, so I do There's nothing sexier than being in your 30s, is there? Well, thanks for listening, guys. You can hear us every week, anywhere you get your podcasts. You can contact us at Spine Chillers Serial Killers um, over on Facebook. You can look at us on Instagram and TikTok. That's SCSK uh, underscore podcast. That's the same for Twitter, too. X, please. It's X. called X. All right. It's the same for X. <laughs> yep. Yeah. In the meantime, guys, stay safe. Don't kill people. And keep it weird. Bye. Are you ready for it? Are you ready? Are you ready for this? Are you sitting on the edge of your seat? Something, something. Are you patting your cheeks? (laughs) (laughs) Ready for a silent fart? Why don't I know the words to that song? I should do, but yes, we are ready. It's quite a hard song. Are you singing? Uh Uh The sound of the beat? Uh Is that what you're singing? Mm. Mm, mm. Another one bites no, the dust. No, no. Oh, that's a horrible! That's a horrible song to sing before my story. <laughs> it is actually, for my section, how insensitive! I didn't mean to. To be fair, it was just you, <laughs> oh, no. it's just you said, "Are you ready?" And I'm on oh, my no. seat, and I'm ready. And, and it, I didn't think it through. Okay, I did not think it through. <laughs> I didn't mean anything by oh, it. I know you didn't. It was a joke. Can I just drop a big foot fact? Go on. Tell me. Apparently, Bigfoot has got a really nice bottom. I thought you were going to say, apparently Bigfoot has got a really big feet. (laughs) 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 Well, I bet he does from striding about all over the mountainous woodland. Every day is leg day to Bigfoot. Yeah. Fluffy, but like really muscular ass cheeks. But it's terrible to wipe. (laughs) (laughs) That's what rabbits are for. He just grabs one and whoop. Ah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> soft on the buttocks. Yeah, it'd be lovely Sorry. and soft. <laughs> Sorry. Keep going. You've made a mistake. You've gone into Bigfoot. <laughs> so- <laughs>
And then he started talking about wiping. And now I need to tell you that one of our, two of our friends have got a fancy toilet that shoots water up your ass instead of toilet roll. Have they really? I really want to, yeah. I want to try one of them so bad. I tried it. It's so cold. I'm like, oh, my little cheeky cheeks. (laughs) What worries me is if it's recycled water. No, it's clean water. Oh, I don't know. You plug it in so it's like the clean water coming into the toilet roll. So it goes into the spout before it goes into the toilet bowl. So it's like, it's just like shower water. So do they not have to wipe their bum after a poo? You just, um, I assume they wipe it once just to dry it off. I just, yeah, quick, quick dry. I've only, I don't poo at other people's houses very often, so I've just had a wee there. And, uh, it's a little bit fresh, a little bit cold, nice and, nice and refreshing in summer, but I haven't tried it in winter yet. (laughs) 